So let's get started. Who is our first victim? Now, who are you dressed as? <laughs> Oliver Queen. What's up, man? Hey, Steven, how you doing? I'm good. So, uh, if you could pick one professional wrestler to have your third match, who would it be? Oh, man. Anyone in history? No. <laughs> <laughs> because I just, I just met, uh, I just met Sergeant Slaughter. We got to talk, all, talk, talk with him all about WrestleMania Seven and stuff like that. That was 1991 for you, youngins. <laughs> but I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go current day. It is a. It's a three-way tie between Britt Baker. Woo! That's right. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll I'll wrestle a woman. She can handle herself. <laughs> Pro wrestling, Britt Baker, Kevin Owens, and after watching that match this past Sunday at All Out, Darby Allen. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I don't know about you guys, I think that that guy is like I think that that guy is the future of pro wrestling. He does stuff in the ring, and if you're not a wrestling fan, I don't know, go get a soda or something like that. <laughs> but he does stuff in the ring, and he, and he, he moved, I, Punk whipped him into the corner at one point, and he shot through the middle of the top turnbuckle, and his body ricocheted off the steel, and uh, the steel ring post, which by the way, is, take it from experience, is a steel ring post. <laughs> and then, then he was just down on the floor, but it was, the, the whole thing had this smooth transition to it, it didn't seem like it hurt, and it's like, I've been watching wrestling since the, the late 1980s. I, I've never seen that before. So, yeah, him. <laughs> also, I'm uh, bigger than he is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. Hey, I just wanted to give a quick shout I got a couple of things here. I just wanted to give a quick shout out. Um, you know, Jared, who is the promoter here, and, uh, and Katie, who's, who's working with me today, so the promoter and all the volunteers, this is my first time, not just at this con, but just in Lexington in general, and I think that everyone's doing a great job, and just a round of applause for all of those guys. <laughs> and uh, and I, I got my guy, Josiah, that's here, right here, that I see right there in the flash shirt that's on the aisle. Um, I come out to these things because uh, I love meeting people, I love hearing their stories, be it a couple that meets because they're watching Arrow, or Josiah, who's had 55 surgeries in his life and has used shows like Arrow and stuff like that to help him through times like this, or like a family that just walked in who named their kid Oliver, the dad's Hey! Uh, that means a lot to me, Josiah, thanks for coming out, it's been good to meet you today, man, thank you. Sure. 
<laughs> What's your question, man? Come on up. Just yell it. No, no, no. No, no. 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 Do this, buddy. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's fine. He wants to know how it felt to shoot the flash in the back of the arrow. <laughs> character, but I was saying goodbye to, professionally, for the time being, a very, very good friend of mine who wasn't going to be on the show anymore, and that was, a, that was a genuinely, genuinely sad moment. A lot of the, a lot of the emotions that you see in that performance are, are, are just... Uh, <laughs> to play Rowdy Roddy Piper. <laughs> What's that from? Well, I mean, I I would like to do a, I would like to do a biopic yeah. at some point. So I mean that that I would like to play a, a, a real person. Yeah. Um, and I'd love to delve into the research of that. And a lot of the, a lot of the things that I do as uh, Jack Spade in Heels, a lot of it, especially that slow saunter to the ring with the look of disdain on your face, that is just grabbed from Rowdy Roddy Piper, who I think is probably one of the greatest heel wrestlers. Well, he is one of the greatest heel wrestlers of all time. So, I mean, I look enough like him. Yeah, and you could do a whole scene where you're shooting They Live and get probably some really good quotes that you could do and There it is. Piper. There it is. Oh, his famous quote. Just when you think you got the answers, I change all the questions. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Courtney, you do not get to ask a question. This is pretty good before you come, Jackie. Go ahead. First of all, thank you for being here today. Um, I told my children that if I had the chance to ask you to do a shout out for them, that I would. So I was like, 
What are their names? Elijah and Emma. Elijah and Emma, shout out. Your mom's not failed this city. <laughs> said Maverick Amell on it. I said Mavie Amell on it, I think. Uh, she would yell action, she would yell cut sometimes. She yelled action once and Paul Blackmore didn't know she was gonna yell action. Mean, He's like, oh, man, you got something to something. Thank you, I appreciate it. But, uh, yeah, no, she, got, she, got, she got totally into it. You know, and, and it, uh, you know, watching, watching Arrow with, with, with her, even when she was a lot younger, just was one of the first things that taught me as a parent not to not to treat your it sounds simple, but not to treat your kids like they're stupid. And and not to treat them like they're kids. Because she'd watch stuff at, at two, three years old, and then she'd ask me like an intricate follow-up question ten days later before we watched the next episode. And I'd be like, holy shit. <laughs> right? So so yeah, she she loved it. She loved it. She's 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 proud of her dad. It's just Microphone down. I'll just pull it down. Just pull it. Terry, you just tell me your question. Watch this. Just tell me. I'll call. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Hey, what's up? Do you think that your friend in real life? Is Thea my friend in real life? Of course she is. Say again. Diaz. Yeah, <laughs> 
Well, let's see if she calls back. Um, <laughs> first and foremost, you got to remember what it is. It's an industry. You have a resume. It's like if you're an accountant or a lawyer or a doctor or an engineer, it, you're, you have a resume. And it's your responsibility to build that resume and to block out a lot of the outside noise of the whole entertainment, singing, acting, dancing, you name it, you're not gonna make it. Everyone wants to do it. Well, yeah, a lot of people want to do it, but it's why you have a resume to start and to build slowly and to prove yourself to be a competent, capable, and reliable worker, employee. It just so happens that, I mean, I love what I do for a living. I feel like I'm on vacation all the time, but I work my ass off. It's hard, you know? It's hard to have, it, it's hard to be in a position where you are responsible for the employment of a lot of people based on something as subjective as your acting performance. So it's really important to remember this is, this is a profession, this is a vocation. Approach it as such. As it comes to anxiety, I just think that, you know, because I used to suffer from, I used to suffer from panic attacks and, and, and they manifested themselves because when we got to the end of Arrow, I was stressed about it ending, stressed that I had made the wrong decision to end it. And, and I didn't take the proper time to mourn it after it was done. And so my body rejected that, that idea. So the simple thing about panic and anxiety is two things from my perspective. Number one, you're not dying. You need to feel like you are. You're not. Breathe. And the second thing is that when it comes to the mind, shame and depression and all of those things, they exist in the past. Anxiety exists in the future. So be in the moment, be present, and that'll really help. Thanks. Thank you. I have a two part question if that's okay. The first one is, is when did you know it was time to end the uh, I'd say two thirds of the way through season six. Um, I had various moments of the show. I became, I was, I was frustrated somewhat with our direction in season four and in season six because I didn't, I felt like we were, we had, in season four we tried something and, and tried to be kind of everything to everyone in terms of we're in, helping introduce a new show and it didn't feel like our show. And season six felt like we, I, I, look, I love all the people that I worked with and the directors, et cetera, et cetera, but it didn't seem like we were moving the ball forward. Now, the good thing about season four and season six is that they led to season five and season seven, respectively. Um, thank you, Ryan. And, uh, but two thirds of the way through season six, my contract ended at the end of season seven. I said, you know, I think it's time. Like, I, I think it's time. We could still be doing the show. That's 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 not it. But there is, you know, I mentioned earlier that the arts, you know, it, you have to treat it like a career in an industry. But at the same time, the the, the goal can't one hundred percent be be financially motivated, you know? And I, I think that any show, I know Smallville went, I think, 220 episodes or 210. Supernatural went 963. <laughs> 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 um, you know, we went 170 episodes and I, I, the show was probably perfectly designed for like 75, you know? We always worked really hard, but you can't deny 
in any process that there are episodes that are filler. You know, I know that every year we would get to the stretch of like episode 11 through 14, and uh, it's it's like in baseball you've got the dog days of the dog days of summer, right? It's kind of what the season was like before you amp up for the for the pennant race or like in a horse race, like in the back stretch. <laughs> You guys familiar? No? <laughs> so I called Greg Berlanti, said it was probably time. He said, this is a terrible, terrible phone call. Please don't do this. But if you really want to, call me back in a week. And I called him back in a week. And he had the idea for the truncated eighth season. Is that what that was? Nice shirt, by the way. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I watched that, I watched Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3 at my friend Brett Perot's house when I was in second grade. <laughs> Went home that night with nightmares. <laughs> and my dad very nearly got into an actual fist fight with his dad for allowing me to watch it. I was up for a month to kill Freddy Krueger. <laughs> anyway, actually, you know what? I don't like that shirt. <laughs> Sure. Not including um, Kingdom Come Batman and in Christ. Was there any time, any time that it was close for Batman actually appearing in the show? No, I didn't think so. I don't, no, I, no, I don't think so. It's, it's, uh, you know, it. I, I don't know how all the, I don't know how all the politics work, but you know, there was a stretch of time where. I was actively trying to be part of the DCEU. And I don't think that they wanted me to be because I was the most popular character in DC. Sorry. <laughs> I think there would ever be a chance that you, Michael, and Tom would work together? And if so, would you, you know, well, it wouldn't have to be superhero related, but maybe something else. I mean, I, I've been very fortunate to get to know Tom, and Michael and I live close to each other in Los Angeles, and seeing him today was, was great, because typically when I go on his podcast, it's to like share some trying emotional, spiritual, existential crises that I've gone through. Uh, I'd love to work with those guys, you know? Uh, I, I understand why we could only do so much with Tom when he was on crisis, which was fantastic, by the way. I really wanted to. I really wanted to work with him, but ultimately, I uh, I understand why it was it was Tyler and Bitsy, I think it was, who worked with him. But uh, I mean, I'm always open to I'm, I'm open to I'm open to any and all things. I really am. I really am. Yeah, I think most of us would love to see it. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> all right, come on. Thank you, everybody. Okay.